Hi and welcome to Quadratic Inequalities. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So we have been asked to solve x squared plus 5x plus 4 is less than or equal to 0. Now, with this being a quadratic, our first port of call should be to think about factorising. Can we factorise this expression um, here? in order to try to solve it if this was an equation. Well, if we want to factorise it, we want to find a pair of numbers which are going to multiply to make plus 4, but add to make plus 5. So numbers which will multiply to make 4, well that would be 1 and 4, 2 and 2. Um, which ones of those will add to make the 5? Well, it's the first pair, 1 plus 4, so I've got x plus 1 and x plus Four. Now, if we were thinking about a sketch of this diagram, these, um, these two values here help us to find the solutions to an equation. Um, and so, that would tell me that x equals negative 1 or x equals negative 4. Now, that would be if it was an equation. Okay. And so, what we need to think about here is if we drew a little sketch of this graph. Well, if we did a little sketch of the graph, what those values are actually telling me are the two points where this graph would actually cross the x-axis. The graph would cross the x-axis at x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 4. Now, that is very important for solving the inequality because what the inequality actually says is at what point are they less than or equal to 0? At those two points, it is exactly equal to zero. We want to know where is it less than. Well, that is happening everywhere here. And so in this section here is where it is less than zero. And so the solution is in this section between x equals negative one and x equals negative four. And so our solution is that x is less than or equal to negative 4, but it has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. Those are the positions on the graph which would be below 0. Let's try that again with x squared take away 2x take away 8. Well, again, let's see if we can factorise. A pair of numbers which are going to multiply to make negative 8, but add to make negative 2. Well, numbers which will make 8 when we multiply them, sorry, negative 8, will be 1 and negative 8, or 8 and negative 1, 2 and negative 4, or 4 and negative 2. Which ones add to make negative 2? Well, it is this pair, and so that is x plus 2, x take away 4. Now, if we were looking for the solutions here, that would be that x equals negative 2 and x equals 4. And so if we were drawing a graph, that is saying that the graph would look like this. It would cross at negative 2 and cross at positive 4. But again, we were looking for the points where it would be less than 0. And so we are dealing with these points here which are in between those two values. And so our solution to the inequality is that x is less than or equal to 4, but it's greater than or equal to negative 2. x lies in between the two values. So one more. x squared take away 8x plus 12 is less than or equal to 0. Well, in this case, if we want to factorise the expression, it's going to be x in both cases. Um, but here, we want two numbers which are going to multiply to make positive 12, but add to make negative 8. That means the two values must actually both be negative. So negative 1 and negative 12, negative 2, negative 6, negative 3, and negative 4. And the pair which add to make negative 8 are the middle two. So that's negative 2, negative 6. And so in terms of the solutions, that is saying that x equals 2 and x equals 6. And so in terms of our diagram, 
Well, that is telling me that if I were to draw a sketch of it, it would look like this. We're crossing at 2, crossing at 6. But again, we want the values which are less than 0. And so those are the points in between those two. And so x this time. And we must be careful of the symbol. The symbol was just a less than in this case. So it must be less than 6 and greater than 2. And so next we're asked to solve x squared plus 11x plus 24 is greater than or equal to 0. So in this case, once again, it's a quadratic. Let's try and factorise it first to see if we can find the solutions to equal 0. Uh, well, what number are we looking for? We're looking for a pair of numbers which will multiply to make 24 but add to make 11. So that's going to be 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Which pair add to make 11? Well, it's this one here. So that's plus 3 and plus 8. And so the solutions would be that x equals negative 3 and that x equals negative 8. And so all that's telling me is that in terms of the graph, it would look like this. And it would be crossing at negative 8 and negative 3. But what we were looking for were the values where it was going to be greater than 0. And so what we're actually looking at here are these sections above the x-axis. And so, because we are looking at the points which are above the x-axis, we actually have to take this as two separate solutions. We have the solution where x is, um, uh, is less than or equal to negative 8. So that is everything here. So any time that x is less than negative 8, or... In this section, at the right-hand side, any time that x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So anywhere in this section is where it would also be greater than 0. So let's try that again with x squared take away 2x take away 3 is greater than 0. Again, we'll try and factorise it. We need a pair of numbers which are going to make negative 3 when we multiply but they're going to make negative 2 uh, when we add. So we've either got 1 and negative 3, or 3 and negative 1. Which pair add to make negative 2? Well, that's the top one. So it's plus 1, take away 3. And so that tells me my solutions are when x equals negative 1, or x equals 3. And so that is telling me that as I draw my diagram, if I just change this slightly, what that means is it's going to cross at negative 1 and it's going to cross at 3. But in this case, what I'm interested in are the points where it is greater than 0. So I'm looking for this section here and this section here. And so, again, they are two separate solutions. We have the solution to start with here, where x is less than um, negative 1. Or the solution at the right hand side where x is greater than 3. So next we're going to look at the situation of solving negative x squared plus x plus 2 is greater than 0 and in here the thing that's making this one a little bit more complicated is the fact we have a negative x squared. Now what that would mean is our graph is now actually looking like this. Um, now we can do this, we can factorise that expression and we'll still get the correct answers but one thing that we can also do just to make things a little bit easier is we can make it so it's not a negative x squared and we can multiply everything by negative 1. If we do that it removes the negative in front of the x squared, it makes it just positive x squared, it makes it a negative x, it makes it a negative 2 and a 0 at the end but the key feature here is that when we do multiply by negative 1, and if you ever neg uh, multiply by negative 1, you must make sure that you also reverse the direction of the sign. And that is because we've turned from a graph which was a U, uh, an N shape, we've made it a graph which is a U shape. And so um, when we're dealing with the specific points, we're looking at a different side of the line. Instead of looking for the points which are um, above the line, we are now looking for the same place 
but beneath the line. And so now all we need to do is factorise in exactly the same way as we had before. So x squared, uh, take away x, take away 2. So I need two numbers which are going to multiply to make negative 2, but add to make negative 1. Well, that's going to be negative 2 and positive 1. And so that tells me that x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 are the points where we cross our line. So there's negative 1, there's 2. And so my graph now looks like this. And what we're looking for are the values where x is uh, where x squared minus x minus 2 is less than 0. So we're dealing with everything here. And so my solution is going to be that x must lie between less than um, positive 2 but greater than negative 1. Our last example just comes from the case where we have um, a, a coefficient of x squared. So we're solving 2x squared plus 11x plus 12 is less than or equal to 0. So the first thing here, we want to factorise the uh, start of the um, inequality. And so we need to do 2 times 12 is 24. And we're looking for a pair of numbers which will multiply to make 24, but they'll add to make 11. So we'll have 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8. 4 and 6 and the pair which add to make 11 are right here 3 and 8 and so that means we have 2x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 12 split it in half it means we have x brackets 2x plus 3 and the common factor between uh, 8x and 12 is 4 so 4 brackets 2x plus 3. We'll bring those back together. That gives me x plus 4, 2x plus 3. And to, then in terms of solutions, that is telling me the first bracket says that x is negative 4. The second one, just a little bit more complicated, uh, because we've got the 2 in front of the x, that means it's going to be negative 3 for the negative version of this over 2. And so, in terms of our graph, this one, when we draw it, our two crossing points, well, that little sketch here, that would mean that at negative 4 and negative 1.5, that is where it crosses. And so we'll draw our little curve in. And we were looking for the points where it was less than or equal to 0. Well, that means we're dealing with the two values in between here. And so what that's saying is that my solution would be that minus 4 is the absolute minimum and then x must be less than or equal to negative 3 over 2. And so we end with the exam question. It came from the Edexcel paper in November 2017 and it was on higher paper 1. And it says that uh, here is a rectangle and a right angle triangle. All measurements are in centimetres. The area of the rectangle is greater than the area of the triangle. Find the set of possible values of x. So for this one, the first thing we need to be dealing with is the fact that we have just been told area of the rectangle, area of the triangle. So the first thing we're actually going to have to do is work out the area of each of those things. And so to work out the area, well, that's going to be 3x take away 2 multiplied by x take away 1. And if I multiply out those brackets, what I get is 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x take away uh, times negative 1 is negative 3x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. So I have 3x squared take away 5x plus 2. That is the area of the rectangle. The area of the triangle well, that is going to be a half times the base which is x times the height which is 2x if i multiply all that together well that's x times 2x is 2x squared half of that is just x squared and so the area of this triangle is x squared now what we were told is that the area of the rectangle is greater than the area of the triangle so let's set that up as an inequality 3x squared take away 5x 
plus 2 is greater than x squared. Now, in order to solve this, we want this to be greater than 0. So we'll take away an x squared. If I take away x squared, I get 2x squared. Take away 5x plus 2 is greater than 0. And now that we've got it in this format, what we want to do is we want to try and factorise. So again, we want two numbers which are going to multiply to make 4 because of 2 times 2. But they need to add to make negative 5. And so we could, uh, in this case, they both must be negative. And there we go, we get it straight away. Negative 1 and negative 4 is how it would work. So 2x squared, take away x, take away 4x, plus 2, must be greater than 0. Split it. Our common factor is x, so 2x take away 1. Over here, we also need 2x take away 1. So our common factor is negative 2, still greater than 0. And so bring them back together. What I've got is x take away 2, 2x take away 1 is greater than 0. And so in terms of solutions, this is telling me that x equals 2. And this is telling me that x equals 1 half. And so in terms of my little sketch, and this is something I'm always going to do, the little sketch just to let me see exactly what I'm dealing with. There is a half. There is 2. There is my graph. Now I was looking for the values where it was greater than 0. And therefore I'm dealing with this section here and this section here. And so that is telling me that the solution would be when x is less than a half or when x is greater than 2. Those would be the points where we would end up with a value greater than uh, uh, greater than zero. And having a look here, um, let's just quickly check, are they both possible? Well, if x is less than a half, if we just go back to this measurement here, x take away one, well, that would mean it's at most a half take away one, which would be negative. We can't have a negative length and therefore in this case this one cannot work and so the only correct value is where x is greater than 2.